Thank you, and good morning, everyone. We are delighted to present our research on Networks at Scale, a metadata-based approach to detecting links between fan fiction communities. Judith and I represent a collaborative work on the, the research team for German studies, digital literary studies at the Technical University of Darmstadt. Our presentation is structured as follows. First, we will provide you a short overview of the development and relevance of fan fiction as a genre and as a practice before presenting our research question and the corpus that we have used. Then, we will delve into the operationalizations implemented to detect and filter clusters within the corpus. After presenting the characteristics of some of these clusters, we will show you how thematic or uh, fandom-based uh, communities interact and collaborate, and how these interactions can be linked back to fan fiction characteristics. Give me a sec. Starting with the analyzed genre, we must point out a few assumptions. Fan fiction is nothing new, and it is certainly not a phenomenon of the recent digital era. Depending on the definition used, fan fiction like literature began in ancient times or the Middle Ages with retellings and rewritings of stories, tales, and protagonists such as King Arthur. Or with the unauthorized sequels of popular novels in the 80s and 90s century, or with modern media fandoms like Star Trek and its very own community. Especially the last uh, example is probably still the most popular one in media and fandom studies. In part because of the extraordinary and long-lasting productivity of its fans, but also because Star Trek is the only fandom who have shaped and even coined its own genre. The popular homoerotic love stories between Spock and Kirk were first called Kirk slash Spock, then shortened to K slash S, uh, until finally only slash remained as a genre marker. To this day, the term slash uh, identifies fan fiction featuring homosexual activity between the, between the mostly male characters, and it's a very popular genre. However, all approaches to define fan fiction have in common that it is understood as a transformative practice. Building on existing worlds from books, computer games, and other media formats, stories are developed or rewritten, some protagonists are restored, some changed or killed. Crossovers bring together characters from different universes, like Harry Styles meeting Harry Potter on a spaceship. There are no limits to fanish creativity. Another significant factor is a strong community bond of those who share the fandom and its cultural framework. Engaged readers contribute to the creation through proofreading of stories, discussions about the plot, and collaborative brainstorming sessions. This active involvement of fan fiction community is integral to the essence of fan fiction itself. Even more, fan fiction can be seen as literature and networks by spinning connections between different fandoms and protagonists, but most notably between authors and readers. The implicit reader here becomes explicit, accessible, and analyzable. Therefore, online fan fiction communities provide valuable insights into the practices of enjoying and sharing fandoms, as well as collaborative activities. To explore these communities and the literary practices, we started scraping fanfiction.de, the largest German language platform for community-based literature. The platform exists since 2004 and contains today more than 425,000 fanfictions and nearly 190,000 original works. Since we are interested in active communities, we scrape only newly created edited or supplemented text, including reader reviews and additional metadata about text and authors on a monthly basis. Our ongoing corpus scraping began in 2020 during the, um, uh, during the corona uh, pandemic, uh, of course, without planning us to do so. <laughs> we therefore captured fan fiction created um, uh, during the corona pandemic. It is noteworthy to mention that our data shows a significant increase of the creation of new stories during the lockdown periods in Germany in 2020, demonstrating the obvious impact of the pandemic on literary production. 
The corpus presented today is restricted to the year 2020 and contains over 26,000 texts from more than 11,000 authors, as well as reviews of over 20,000 texts. Overall, we gathered the platform activities of over 28,000 users. Previously, our research group focused on analyzing literary transformation practices in the text and commentary strategies of genre stars, particularly those fan fictions that garnered significant attention, measured in ratings and reviews similar to other social media platforms. Additionally, we explored character shifts in Harry Potter fanfics revealing that the canonical characters and their established traits are not merely copied and pasted into new fanish narratives. Instead, they are adapted in a manner that aligns with narrative constraints of the fanish universe. Shaped by existing retellings and reimaginations, often, oh sorry, I, I'm lost. <laughs> I'm sorry. Instead, they are adapted in a manner that aligns with the narrative constraints of the French universe, shaped by existing retellings and reimaginations, often compensating for a lack of narrative representation in the originals. Having explored genre stars and anonymous reviewers and transformations of established canons in fan fiction, we are now interested in the active collaboration between users, users who read and write fan fiction. In short, we are looking for the interaction level of our fan fiction network. So here you can see the network of all review interactions between users in 2020. The 28,588 notes represent uh, the users, the 56,548 links denote the re review relationships. The colors stand for modularity clusters. Uh, before we focus on the network itself, uh, we would like to take some time to talk about modularity clustering as well. So as most of you and some of you will know, modularity clustering is a technique used in network analysis to identify modular structures within a network. It is prim its primary, uh, primary objective is to divide a network into communities um, or groups where nodes with the in within the same group are uh, densely con uh, connected while connections between uh, groups are less frequent. The algorithm achieves this by optimizing a measure called modularity, which quantifies the quality of the partitioning uh, by comparing the number of edges within communities uh, to the expected numbers of edges if the network uh, were randomly connected considering the node degree distribution. A higher modularity value indicates a better community structure. The algorithm's goal is to maximize uh, modularity, that's, uh, yeah, uh, capturing the non-random connectivity patterns and revealing underlying modular structures. So uh, here on the right, uh, you can see some illustrations of detected communities based on a specific modularity score. A high m higher modularity score indicates optimal partitioning, like in the example on the top left that shows two distinct communities. A negative modularity score, like in the bottom right, um, sh uh, indicates that no communities have been identified and that connecti connectivity patterns are random. With a modularity score of 0 0.738, uh, our network has a clear community structure, and consequently, we can use the clustering to identify close-knit communities within our network. Now we need to introduce uh, some filtering to be able to scale down to a particular level of interaction. Uh, that we are looking for the collaboration between reader-writers. So for this, we need to define a filtering that rewards users who both read and write, or better to say, read and review. This may sound trivial, but as Katarina has said before, there are plenty of genre stars. So very successful uh, writers on the platform who spend their time primarily writing fanfics and hardly ever comment on other, others' works. On the other side, there is a plethora of anonymous users who only react to texts and never take part in the productive reception of their fandom. 
In network terms, we need thus to uh, identify nodes with uh, both a high in degree, uh, because to receive many reviews and, con uh, and consequently have many ingoing links and a high out degree, because they review other texts and consequently have many outgoing links. Additionally, our uh, measure needs to reward a balance of writing and receiving reviews. We don't want to find users who write hundreds of texts and only one review, or vice versa. And uh, consequently, we decided to implement a ge the uh, geometric mean of in and out degree that takes both centrality measures into account equally. After eliminating all nodes with a uh, geometric mean of zero, i.e. those users who have have not written a text in 2020 or a review in 2020, the network looks like this. So here you can sti still see the colors of the modularity clustering, but the network m uh, looks much less like a hairball, consisting of only 3,769 no user notes and 10,661 review links. The link width uh, are weighted by the number of reviews between users. The higher and dark, uh, the thicker and darker the link, the more reviews one user has written about texts uh, by the other one. The size of the node shows uh, of the nodes show the geometric mean of the in and out degree. Uh, before I will go on to talk about, or we will go on to talk about the results. Uh, I would like to draw uh, your attention to some of the sim uh, thematic similarities that we found in the modularity clustering. In this cluster here, for example, links between the 144 users uh, are predominantly based on fanfics about sports like football and ski jumping and TV, uh, German TV. In this cluster here, uh, the 92 users are linked because they read and write fan fiction about Twilight and Fifty Shades of Grey, which itself was first published as a fan fiction of Twilight. Uh, the relation, this relationship, the relationship between the original text and the productive reception of the original seems to be a, an aspect that is also relevant for the fan community on fanfiction.de. What we can thus see from these thematic clusters is that there's an, un that there's an unsurprising tendency of users having close relationships with each other because they share interest in a fandom or combination of fandoms. What we can also see, however, is that there are quite a lot of intensive intercluster relationships between users, or in other words, interactions between fandom-based clusters. Until now, we have argued with users, reviews, and shared characteristics of fan fictions written and reviewed by users of a particular cluster. But in order to better describe how users interact, we have to introduce more complexity to the links in our network. As I've said before, the link between two nodes uh, stands for a review relationship between two users. This interaction can be uh, based on one review on one text, uh, many reviews on one text, or even many reviews on multiple texts. And to gain more insight into uh, the overall structure of these interactions, we, we've added metadata about the texts that were reviewed, uh, something like the story type, the genre, and the age restrictions. If more than one fan fiction is the basis for the review interaction and the review link, uh, we've implemented a winner-takes-it-all classification. Uh, the majority class is used for the classification of the link according to the shared text characteristics. If, for example, a review link uh, between user A and user B is established because user B has written five reviews about three different fan fictions written by user A, uh, and two of these fan fictions are classified as romance, then the link is classified as a Romans link. And this network visualization here, we have highlighted the strongest user interactions that are based on, uh, based on or dominated by fan fictions classified as fantasy. With clusters 0, 14, and 16, 
the fantasy genre uh, primarily links clusters that are maybe not that surprising, dominated by Lord of the Rings, Game of Thrones, Harry Potter, How to Drain a Dragon, Aragon, and Star Wars. It seems that even if users are tightly embedded in their favorite fandom communities, they still venture out of this close-knit community and interact quite intensively with other fandoms. There are, of course, many different relationships that we could look at now, but now we want to uh, come back to one of the central aspects of fan fiction, Slash. As mentioned before, Slash is one of the most popular genres. We can't find it everywhere in our corpus. Since the Slash identifier on fanfiction.de is linked to the age recommendations, we can scale the category even deeper. The platform offers four categories for Slash Fitch. Fix font 12 Slash, which contain, contains stories without explicit sexual descriptions, to uh, 16 Slash and 18 Slash, where the degree of explicitness of sexual descriptions increases. The scale culminates in the category of P18 AVL, meaning, and I quote, low to extensive descriptions of violence with graphic descriptions of sexual practices that can have a disturbingly effect on children and, children's and adolescents. The edges have been colored according to the slash category. Light blue for 12-year-olds, green for 16-year-olds, dark blue for 18-year-olds, and red for the potential disturbing and developmentally dangerous fan fictions which, by the way, are only accessible to logged-in users between 11, a, uh, 11 p.m. and 4 a.m. or after age verification. An initial observation is the prevalence of the blue edges in our network. This result is not unexpected, considering that slash fiction is characterized by the sheer existence of homoerotic themes, but you might say that a rule in our network is doing slash usually means going all in. Of course, there are exceptions to this trend, and in the following, we will highlight some interesting findings. First, let's have a look on the green links and examine Cluster H, which is, which is predominantly about American television series. In this cluster, we can find fan fictions for crime series like Criminal Minds and Chicago Police Department, as well as mystery and fantasy series like Shadowhunters and Good Omens. Zooming in on the cluster shows no, no, no. It, it zooms. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Zooming in on the cluster shows a dense structure, structure of slash based reviews, in most cases G rated. In addition, the zooming should help you to recognize the different links widths, reflecting the number of received and written reviews. Following this lead, we spotlighted the user Lady Fangirl, who claims to be 33 years old and recently changed her username to. Serien Junkie Nessa. Tracking pseudonym changes on the platform can be challenging, but Serious Junkie Nessa can be identified quite simple through her publications. And her name change matches the context of her fanfiction. She's been active since 2016 and has published more than 240 fanfictions on various series, from Criminal Minds to Star Trek to the Chicago franchise with Chicago Pol Fire Department, Chicago Police Department, and Chicago Mets. But Nessa's main fandom is Shadowhunter. On her profile, you can even write the Lord's Prayer rewritten to praise Shadowhunters. I won't quote it in full, but even the first lines give an, imp an impression of fan love lived out. Shadowhunters, hours in heaven, hallowed be your blade. Your runes come as an Eden so on Earth. Nessa is an interesting example for our network. She herself writes and reviews frequently, but she's certainly not a genre star. Neither does her fan fiction gain an unusual amount of attention, nor is she one of the most reviewed authors on the platform. But she's an engaged community member who is in close communication with other users who share her preferences. In her case, American television series with a primarily male cast, which, at least in the fan fiction world, love men. We see a lot of cluster homophily here. Finally, uh, I'd like to give an example of cluster independent comments preferences. So we focus here on the red link that connects two different clusters. Cluster 6 on the bottom left contains various fandoms, but it's dominated by the long-running and very popular TV series Supernatural, 
and the German audio drama Die Drei Fragezeichen, The Three Investigators. In contrast, Cluster 35 is more uniform. It consists mainly of mangas, Attack on Titan. The following connection, or by following the connection, we can clearly see that taste, not fandom, is distinct here. The edge reflects various users re writing reviews of God of Mischief 86, an author who focuses on P18 AVL fanfictions. So, with this example, we've come, we come to the end of our presentation. Uh, we have been operating under the premise that online uh, writing platforms in general and fanfiction spaces in particular are forms of, forms of community-based literature and thus determined by collaborative practices. With the approach that we have presented today, we are not, a not only able to scale this specific layer of interaction, filtering out stars and re uh, reviewers. By doing so, we can explore the mechanics of interactions between users who collaborate. While collaborative users are closely embedded in their fandom communities uh, that were detected with the modularity clusters, some of the reading interests seem to be based on more general aspects of fan fiction, such as overall genre, as we have just uh, seen with the example of fan fiction, uh, with fantasy, and explicitness, as you, you have just seen in the example with P18 AVL uh, links. More generally, our approach allows us to understand fan fiction as a literary microcosm in which literary concepts become explicit because they are encoded in relational data, from genre attributions to the in implicit reader, from review practices to intertextuality. Fan fiction is thus not only an easily structured as a network, but is in fact literature in networks, with explicit relationships, user-generated taxonomies, and scalable structures. And with that, we'd like to, uh, we would like to thank you for your attention and are happy to answer all your questions. <laughs>